welcome to DEFCON 28, the safe mode edition. You're watching a video or a talk by Hack the Sea Village and it's provided you from Obi-1666. Um, yeah, let's talk about swimming IoT, an IT and OT overview. But yeah, it's better without that mask. Um, so I don't expect anything here. So let's go. Yeah, what will we listen today? We have a short introduction um, over me, then uh, we get an overview of IT and OT systems on a yacht, uh, then we look a little bit deeper into the bridge network, how the bridge network is working and how some messages are transmitted. Um, so that's then more the details in the ACTIS Technical 101. So how is an ACTIS network working? and um, how the messages are transferred, how it is look like and what will be the outlook for, yeah, let's say, the next year until the next DEFCON. Um, hopefully back in Vegas then. Yeah, why hacking yachts? Uh, accidentally I slipped into this uh, topic, so my boss owns one and I was able to uh, build some devices on the ship and then I started to look at them and um, yeah so mostly they are owned by private uh, they are privately owned and chartered by uh, or chartered by private people and uh, or CEOs running their business from yachts while they are traveling so um, the best office that you can have is away from every uh, everyone else so it's not crowded anyhow uh, so you have your safe place and you can do their business um, from from your office on the water, so it's a nice place to work from. And all the celebrities uh, they're using also yachts um, and showing uh, off on the famous places in the world and make their Insta stories and so on. So um, if you maybe have access to a yacht where a celebrity is uh, on then you can do maybe some other things with that information. Um, yeah. So the thing is then, what if we have control over the yacht, uh, the internet access for example, or all the smart devices or the IT or the OT network that is uh, on board. So what we will have there, uh, we will see in this uh, presentation. So my name is Stefan Gerling, uh, I'm also named obi 666 older than the internet, um, as always, <laughs> have a couple of certifications like uh, GCSA, CISSP, uh, Microsoft Certified System Engineer, CCNA by Cisco, and a couple of others. So, yeah, so some of them are, uh, are not maintained anymore. Um, so, the one that I, yeah, my favorite one is Assist. Um, OSCP is the next one I maybe will start on, but yeah. So, my background is an electronic specialist. I was working in the German aviation army um, on navigation systems for helicopter and uh, also 30, uh, 32 years now a volunteer firefighter in my city here uh, in the beautiful Dingen. Um, yeah, I volunteer also um, in a couple of groups. So Geraffel is one of the things. It's a group of nerd hackers. Uh, uh, yeah, from around uh, Europe, you can say. Uh, I'm the Calvary, Calvary project I'm also working on. Then we have an uh, AG Kritis, it's an NGO on uh, critical infrastructure, and uh, also for the CCI. Yeah, what kind of networks we have on board? Um, yeah, so I've counted a little bit, so I found five different networks that we can have. So it's on the IT network. Uh, we have the IT network and we have the wireless network as one. And then we have a couple of more networks when we look at the OT side. So um, yeah, you can say the bridge network is an own network. So all the navigation system uh, and so on, everything what's uh, needed for the operation of the ship is on the bridge connected uh, together. So I called it the bridge network. 
And then we have an Anemia network or the Anemia bus. So we will see a little bit uh, what kind of system is that. Then we have an ICS network uh, where all the PLCs and something else is uh, connected to it. And um, yeah, the KNX um, or Instabus, you can say it's also a network. Uh, yeah, you can it count it to the ICS network, but uh, it can also count it to the IT network. So I have it put in here as an uh, additional one. So I've counted here six, but uh, yeah, it's five networks, maybe more. Um, GSM is not explicitly here in, or the uh, satellite network, um, then we are already on uh, seven, when we count that also. Okay, what have we? IT and OT. Um, yeah, you think now, yachts, what could be on there? Um, I say it's a swimming IoT device, because there are so many systems on board uh, that are connected together and uh, most of them will have also internet connection. And from that point of view, so we have an ICS network and we have an IT network uh, with maybe VPN connections to offices and so on. And everything is working um, from this small uh, vessel. Um, in detail we have there for example the VTS, the Vessel Traffic Service. Um, we have automatic identification system, the AIS, we have autopilot, we have GPS, we have radar, we have cameras, uh, also thermal cameras, we have uh, engine control and monitoring units that's um, in the uh, ICS network. Uh, some of them are more and more uh, cloud-based or cloud-connected now, so that you have access over your um, cloud-based devices on the engine control um, or the engine monitoring systems uh, the control that's a bad idea and we have internet access for the guests for the crew and for the owner and a couple of inter uh, entertainment systems that are also connected over various uh, systems together so all of those things uh, in the network view we will see a little bit later now um, over a couple of things I have already uh, given some talks, um, yeah. so I will sometimes use it as a reference. So for the basic overview, we have the Anemia network here. So it's a bus system, uh, in, in the old days it was a serial bus, it uh, is going from, um, yeah, uh, completely through the whole ship and it's uh, connected with um, yeah, taps to the devices. So this is an uh, old serial system. Um, the connections look like a little bit like the 10 base 2 connectors uh, or the Tethernet from the old days um, and everything is connected to that. It's not that fast, it's only 4800 baud speed and it's, um, yeah, as I already said, a serial communication protocol and it connects uh, the echo sounders, sonars, aneometers, gyros, uh, autopilot, GPS and something else. Uh, there are a couple of devices more. Then we have uh, the Anemia 2000. Um, this is already a canvas, uh, standard canvas technique uh, and we can operate already with one megabit. Um, it's fast, but not that fast. For more and more applications, we need now uh, faster networks. So the next generation is then, uh, for example, Raymarine called them uh, the CTOG MD. So this is um, yeah, this is also um, a canvas system, uh, but uh, Raymarine calls it. We call it CTOG NG next generation, uh, but it's the same like Anemia 2000. But the uh, um, new version is a CTOG HS, uh, HS. So it's uh, HS is for high speed. So this is a 10 megabit uh, Ethernet network where, for example, here you see in the picture, some camera devices and navigation systems are connected together. Um, Six is, for example, um, part of the bridge network um, from the glass bridge series and so on. 
um, and all the devices are connected to this. Then we have a couple of IT equipment on board. Um, I would think now, yeah, what could be on there? Uh, well, the bigger the ships are, the more equipment is on it. Um, so the first listing that I have here is uh, from a 30 meter yacht. 30 meter uh, is not that much, but it's already a, a big one. So here we have an, um, a yeah, half-size rack completely full with uh, IT equipment. So we have a router, we have some servers, uh, three in total. We have two voice over IP gateways. We have an, a fully uh, um, yeah, fully equipped uh, 80 port, yeah, 48, yeah, 84 port switch. Sorry, and we have an uh, uninter uninterrupted power supply for that. Uh, in total on that ship uh, we had 10 smart TVs uh, and SAT receivers. We had a chart PC, uh, 14 voice over IP telephones, internet router, UPS and 4 access points for the Wi-Fi. Uh, this is from a uh, 48 meter uh, yacht. So this is already a complete full rack and there is a second rack full of um, additional stuff. and. In each cabin is also a small rack uh, with um, the entertainment systems and uh, uh, AVR system, the amplifiers uh, and that stuff. So that's then in each cabin also an extra housing. And this one was from uh, a 70 meter yacht class. Uh, here you see already two complete full uh, equipped racks and there is a third one with a navigation system uh, rack. So it's an Total on that ship already um, three full stacked 42 inch uh, yeah, network racks, you can say. And um, yeah, we had for that ship already uh, around 25 access points, for example, to have a Wi Fi coverage over the complete board. To get an idea about what the network on the AV equipment looks like, so a audio and video network. So here you see, an, um, yeah, it's connected to the IP network. There is a Crestron uh, device that's connecting to everything. So the smart TVs uh, are connected on the IP side and uh, uh, no, they are not connected uh, on the IP side. They are only connected on the video side to the Crestron. The Crestron is the, um, multimedia device that is connected uh, to the IP network. So it's a little bit different. Um, but there's also an Apple TV um, and such receivers that you will see there. So we have the, the, the Blu-rays, Apple TV and the Crestron system it, itself. And uh, they have also different connection types. Um, you will see it on the chart with uh, different colors and um, yeah, well documented in this one. We have also um, additional other things. So most of the equipment you can access with a tablet. So we have a tablet on board where you can connect to, um, to the audio and video streaming. You can stream music on your tablet. You can use then the tablet and say in the cabin, uh, okay, now I want to have the audio to the um, amplifier to listen to the um, audio system on my uh, room where I'm currently in or you go uh, in, into the gym where you have uh, flat TV screens uh, in the ceiling where you can watch uh, to the news uh, or listen to music or whatever um, or have multimedia um, training system then on there so you are cycling on your bicycle uh, and you see um, a video of um, yeah, virtual reality where you are cycling you have also other things like uh, light control, where you can switch on the lights and uh, on and off. The electric curtains, you can um, lever them up and down. Um, you have, for example, an engine monitor, a rudder monitor, and so on. So everything is accessible, for example, over a tablet. On the OT side, we have uh, a couple of other things. So there, one of the men, um, monitoring systems is the engine 
monitoring and control system. Uh, also the propulsion, bow thruster, the KNX system for the light control, um, the PLCs, um, the valve controls and so on. So it's a whole bunch of systems on the OT side that we have connected. Um, yeah. To get a bigger overview of the OT, um, I have a couple of pictures of that uh, that you get a feeling about uh, what you will see. So you have all the engines uh, that are connected to mostly two engines that you have on that. Then you have uh, two or three uh, power generators that are connected. You have a couple of heat sensors, uh, water sensors, um, sensors for how many fuel is in there uh, and so on. The HVAC control, water distribution, pumps and valves um, and so on. For example, this is um, this is only the diagram of an engine control unit. Um, so you have the engines with all the sensors. It's connected to an, uh, in this uh, in this case it's an Automaskin 400. Um, the last year I was on, there was also an Ausgemaskin control unit on it, and um, the engine is then uh, connected to the um, engine control unit. There's some special safety unit, uh, the SDU, um, and everything is connected. Uh, with different links together and uh, at the end uh, it's everything connected to the Ethernet network. So there's then uh, the Ethernet switch and also connections maybe to the Modbus uh, or other bus systems that you will find there um, that I have shown here. So this is then a picture of an uh, engine control room where the um, uh, ETO is sitting. The ETO is the electrical uh, technical officer, and uh, so mostly at yachts 60, 70 meters or that, there you have an ETO. Uh, below that, uh, the um, technical uh, officers, they um, are in charge for that. But uh, on bigger ships, you have a uh, dedicated person for that. Um, and then you have uh, the different monitor systems where you can see all the kind of things. So here we have a uh, monitor of um, the engines, so the port engine and the starboard engine. Um, this is an overview of the uh, ICS network itself. So how it is connected, how many PCs are in the network, uh, how many uh, PLC systems are there and so on. So this is in this case an overview of how many systems are there and where I will find it. Um, you have here on the right side for example main cabinet, remote rack uh, and so on. Um, also a PC client in the Dingnet uh, or, or Dynet. Um, this is in the um, yeah, where the crew is sitting. Uh, there is an extra monitor. You have um, Clients on the bridge, um, on the starboard side, and on the port side. For example, in the captain's cabin, uh, there is also a connection so that the captain, when he is uh, at rest, he has also access to all of those systems. Um, and yeah, this is one of the um, computers that are connected to the monitors uh, and that are connecting uh, or getting all the information from the PLCs, for example. And here on the right you see also a big silver um, thing, I'm not sure if my mouse is here. So this device is um, the network connection. So in this case the complete PLC network is separated. Um, I've seen also some other ships where this connection is active. So this owner uh, or this crew has decided, okay, when we don't need it, we pull the plug to the normal network, so nothing is connected on that side. Very good decision. And when they need remote assistance, then they put the network cable into the uh, normal hub or in the normal switch, and then they can give a remote access uh, for the maintenance people that they have remote uh, visibility or maybe can do some remote task on that. This, for example, is. Um, yeah, one of the racks where the complete PLC system is. So this is a full rack of uh, Siemens PLCs. 
with all the subunits of that. And here you see some kind of um, fuel tanks and um, yeah, how many fuel is in which tank and also you can access all the valves for the fuel tank that you can pump fuel from one tank to another one uh, to balance uh, the ship with that. So this is um, an HMI unit, for example. This is uh, this is in one area where you maybe have to open a door for the garage or for the uh, bus platform or whatever. Um, so there are some uh, HMI units also for that. And this is from another ship. Um, even here, you see the main PLCs, um, the rudder, uh, the ECR, uh, and so on and also some other connections uh, where we connect together. So um, here you see already also a serial connection where the sensors are connected and also the, uh, the network layout of that. Um, so this is then a different system, a different ship um, with a different view on the things, but in general they are doing more or less the same. Um, here we have other systems, here is more or less uh, ABB stuff uh, connected, here we have also a KNX for the um, light controls uh, and so on. So this is one of the um, connection boards where everything is connected together. So this is from the electrical point of view one of the nice things. This is another uh, in the uh, bridge, yeah, um, under the bridge or behind the bridge, you can say. So the bridge panel is uh, on the right one, the the, the brown thing, and uh, on the left one, the open thing that you see here with the wires that is um, from the PLC network. And you see uh, in the middle uh, two network devices that belongs to the bridge network. So that we will have a closer look at later. So this is then, uh, yeah, also the connections where another rack is with uh, some um, yeah, PLC stuff uh, and connecting the information from the systems. And here we have um, another connection system. So everything is connected over Ethernet together. Yeah, what kind of attack records we have there? So this is an, a network diagram that I have wrote uh, and uh, painted and I think I have to adjust it a little bit because uh, there are a few things that are now missing when I look at it. But in general we can say um, we can attack the systems over the internet for example if we have access to the internet router in, in my last year talk um, I've shown uh, how to bypass authentication, for example, on an internet router model uh, with the vulnerabilities there and also uh, on the satellite systems uh, where I had also access over the satellite modems uh, to the network. Um, of course, yeah, you can plant malware on the crew PCs or the uh, captain PC or the owner uh, PC or whatever, then you have access, for example, on that. The personal digital assistant devices of the crew or the owners is also another point uh, where you can plant malware or where you can, where you can start with your attacks. Um, yeah. And another interesting point uh, is then once you have access on the internet site, you have to dig um, for a gateway, for example, the Anemia gateway. So the Anemia gateway. Um, is often a bidirectional uh, gateway. When you have access to that gateway and can plant uh, Anemia uh, messages on that device, you can interact uh, also with the Anemia messages on that. But uh, yeah, these were points of my uh, previous talk. And uh, on the PLC network itself, um, you have a couple of other attack uh, things that you can do. Okay the bridge. We have seen already a couple of OT pictures. Uh, now we look a little bit more on the bridge. So this is a bridge from a 70 meter class. Um, you have um, yeah, seats for two 
captains, but uh, only one rudder in the middle of the uh, ship. So two people can uh, sitting there and doing their job. And they have access to a couple of systems and monitors uh, that you can see here. Um, I will not go in detail on the systems. Um, they are, yeah, you have the OT monitoring devices, uh, you have all the normal things that, uh, to operate a ship, and uh, you have the navigation things that you need there. Um, another side view of that, so it looks very nice there. It's a good place to work. Uh, the view from front, uh, from the night, so it looks, look, it looks a little bit like a Star Wars ship. Um, I love that view. This is from a 45 meter yacht, um, from the inner view. Um, here you have only uh, one seat for the captain, um, but uh, also a couple of monitors you will see here and um, where you will find all your necessary information to operate the ship in a safe manner. Here on the left the monitor is already switched on. Uh, I switched on the Actis um, so that I can test some uh, devices. Later I had also uh, the S-band and X-band radar on. Um, so I switched on only the, the system but it was not transmitting a radar echo. So radar in the harbor is uh, not a good idea. Um, but you can switch on the system itself and uh, but it's then in standby but you will see then the network messages um, yeah so that's then my working place when i was looking at um, the yachts so yeah it looks nice but uh, in really uh, yeah sometimes the um, um, yeah, the AV is not on, so you have not that cool temperatures there when you have outside uh, above 30 degrees. Uh, sometimes uh, the climate, uh, climate control is not working, so uh, it becomes hot on the bridge um, when they do their tests. But in general, it's a nice place to work. I love that kind of outlets. So. This is an uh, overview that I found in the Actis installation guide, for example, from the Transas and Navi Sailor MD4000. Uh, they have a nice overview about that. You have here two screens uh, on the left and the right side, and uh, they are connected together so you can switch from one um, Actis to another, uh, and all the information you can also switch. Um, it's in the documentation. You can uh, find it the link I have put in my slides here, so that you can put a look in. It's more than 200 slides um, presentation for that, um, but it's very nice to read because that is very detailed. There are also, um, yeah, you can say uh, how the datagrams are um, configured uh, on the network um, that we will need. Uh, later for Wireshark modules. So this is then, uh, okay here we had the network uh, diagram in, uh, in an overview and here we go a little bit more detailed in um, the DCU, the battery pack, the UPS, uh, the keyboard, the monitor and the computer system itself and what kind of connections you have there. Um, where it is going. For example, you see here the um, S-band radar connectors, there's some special board for that. There's another uh, picture of that for the, um, yeah, here we have the X-band uh, and another one is the S-band radar, um, how it is connected. In reality, it looks a little bit more crowdy like this. Um, you open the cabinets and then it looks like, uh, wow, well, um, yeah, sometimes a little bit like a mess, but yeah, it is working. So this is uh, from pictures from the, um, I must think it's the 30 meter yacht. Yeah, that's from the 30 meter yacht where I made uh, my first audit there and uh, got the recordings from that. This is then the PC, uh, that's for the navigation system. So you think that you have a navigation system with the electronic chart system. So in general it is a 
Windows computer. And Windows computer with Windows software where you have your digital navigation charts on it where the navigator is navigating through the sea. That's it. Um, it's connected then with a an hub and so on. But when you now think about okay, let's do an Nmap scan on the bridge network, uh, I say think twice about it. It's very legacy old stuff that you sometimes have. Um, on the 30 meter yacht where I was on, it was a transverse system. The ship was uh, nine years old and uh, it was in, yeah, the transverse system at that time was a Windows XP embedded system. And uh, yeah, you can imagine nine years not connected to the internet, no patches, no updates, nothing. And it's still running. Um, so that was a point for me. Uh, okay, I don't make an Nmap scan on that network. Uh, I passively connect to that and to see uh, what's on the wire. Um, so I take in this case my Linux uh, PC, it's a Kali Linux in that case, uh, and my configure my network interfaces to passively monitor the network and um, later we will look a little bit deeper in that how it is looking like. So on the left you see my laptop connected and the bigger screen is already one of the datagrams you see there. Um, I will come later in the uh, Wireshark demo where we can see a little bit more. Then we have uh, yeah, the Actus system itself. So the Actus it's the short uh, abbreviation version of uh, Electronic Chart Display and Information System. In the past we had paper charts for navigation. Um, also we using a sync stand and a compass and whatever. Compass is still there, uh, GPS is also there, but uh, we need also um, electronic charts, so it's called ANGS. So the thing is, uh, under the IMO regulations, um, it is now allowed that you don't need any paper charts uh, anymore. So unless you have two active devices, uh, independently active devices, uh, active devices. So two active devices does not mean that you have two different active devices. Um, so when you update one, uh, the pay uh, and you update also the other one, uh, the failure could be on both of the same systems. Uh, also, they are connected in the same network um, when maybe an attacker is able to attack uh, on the network area, um, um, area the devices, they will most likely um, be successful on both devices. Yes, but um, yeah, you need two devices, then you're fulfilling the requirement, that's it. So it's a navigation uh, geographic information system for the nautical navigation uh, of the ship. So you have the position, heading, speed, um, you have also deep information about uh, the waterways there and uh, also the waterways itself. And you can have overlays uh, on the Actis uh, system from the NADA, from Navtex, uh, from the AIS system and so on. So it's yeah, the Actis is the more or less the main navigation system and you can have as an overlay, as an additional layer on top, all the other systems like um, the radar or whatever, what you need. This is then a picture of the Actis system, how it is looked like. Um, this is in the port of Barcelona, for example, uh, where you see then, yeah, uh, where the one ship is and all the other ships are also. Uh, these are here these the small things here they are uh, laying in the docks. Here is a big cruise ship uh, and here is also another cruise ship and you have also the waterways how to travel into the different areas there. And uh, yeah the transas from the old system from 2011, you see here it's in Windows XP with default credentials because it's not connected to the internet and um, 
he never changed it. So it's a Windows XP system and the login name are as in the uh, documentation of the system. So people install it and it's working like that. So nobody takes care about that. So it's more likely when you have access to the network of it or accidentally someone connect the network to the uh, other networks, then uh, yeah, it would be not so a good idea. You can have also access uh, on the Actis to all the Anemia messages. We have special um, Modi where you can look at these informations. But these informations you will also see on the network. Um, yeah, the Anemia data is like that. So two weeks ago I did the last audit um, on a 45 meter yacht and uh, I was connecting them also to the network and then I found uh, nice information. So um, one of the things um, what I do mostly is then sniff all the data and then using at first uh, the statistical um, diagrams so to get an overview who is uh, talking with uh, who, how many packets are going to that. And then here in this picture you see uh, there is only one public IP address and it's only six packet in that uh, time frame where I was uh, scaling. So in this case it is an, a Furuno um, Actis system. It's not a Transas, it's a Furuno. So Transas is the major player, Furuno is the second uh, biggest in that area. So it doesn't matter. So technically uh, they're doing all the same. Yeah. These internet connection paid my attention and then I was looking so hmm wow uh, what it is it going to uh, yeah to that address so I used then a filter to look up and yeah it is a uh, NTP protocol so the active system is connected to the normal network um, and then um, it makes a network um, time protocol call to an NTP server in the internet. Why? So why it is? Why should the um, bridge network connect it to the internet? So normally it makes no sense. Especially not to get the network time from the internet. It could be accurate, but what is when the uh, network is not available? Um, and we have GPS systems on board. So why don't take the GPS time as the time source? So I then uh, introduce the captain. So hey, just take an, a network time protocol server. It's, it's a small box. It get the time information from the GPS system and is then acting as an NTP server. And then you can say the act is, so okay, this is your NTP server. Take the time from that. And at this, at this point, you don't need an uh, internet connection anymore. Um, yeah. Satcom is another thing uh, I had in my last talk uh, a couple of vulnerabilities in. So, yesterday I looked up some uh, systems there, and uh, there are still a couple of them online. Um, yeah. Why Satcom? So, you have offshore internet access uh, via Satcom. Patching mostly not, uh, and still many old versions are online and out there. So, in technically, it's an uh, you have a uh, satellite antenna dish uh, on top of the ship uh, with an ICU unit for that, and then under deck uh, you have a computer that's connected over an, a media exchange protocol uh, system, uh, then to the ICU. Um, that's simple. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, but yeah, that's how it looks like. Uh, you can look on Shodan for a couple of um, satellite dishes that are vulnerable to things. And um, yeah, the thing that I found was in uh, Cobam CTEL systems in the MXP web server. And yeah, this is the first string where you use it. So. This was 2018, I had then 21 uh, online, so at that time I was thinking, okay, uh, there are a 
couple of them online, uh, but not that much. But I find out the reason why it is. Um, I will explain later. Um, yesterday I looked up, there are still 19 online, um, yeah, not really 19, you have here on port 80, 15 devices that are still accessible. Why not more? Um, yeah, also um, Shodan had a uh, live ship tracker, so all the systems that are connected over VZ were um, available over the ship tracker.shodan.io but Shodan has decided, I don't know why, um, but yeah, it's okay, to switch off those systems, so the ship tracker is currently not anymore there. So then I was thinking, okay, why not uh, more set devices uh, are in the internet to find? And um, in my last audit, I also found out that um, Depending on the VZ provider that you get, um, they will using a net address um, network address translating uh, IP masquerading they're using. So you have a private IP address on your modem device that's connecting over the satellite, and uh, um, yeah, the internet provider over satellite um, is making then the connection to the internet. So hiding all the ships that are using the VZ uh, to the internet. So it's a good decision, yes, but on the other hand um, it's shifting the attack level from the bad guys in the internet to maybe bad guys at the internet providers. So the internet provider has still the ability if they want or if they have to do by uh, what kind of government they maybe have then access to the ship network over the internet because of the vulnerabilities that are still there. So, yeah, the device is not visible to the internet um, and it gives the owner or the crew a deceptive security because, hey, my device is not findable over the internet. But, uh, yeah, they are still there and the provider could exploit it now or someone else who is working for the, uh, at the provider level. And uh, most of the devices that you find also using always the same default credentials. So install it and change it. Yeah, coming more or less to the end of my talk. Um, yeah, I show a little bit more on Wireshark demos now. Um, but all of my tools I will uh, publish on GitHub, also the the decoders later on for Wireshark. So I'm working on now uh, to make some kind of uh, Actis decoder for the data runs that you have to see, because in Wireshark it's very hard to find out uh, how this looks like. Um, let's have a look for that. So we have Wireshark here. Um, so this is from one of my first network audits um, we have here many UDP uh, protocols. So what you see, uh, I always use the statistics. Uh, let's look for the endpoints, for example. And then you see, yeah, no magnifying here. You see then here the connections, um, but it's okay. So you, the thing that you see here is uh, that we can make bigger. Most of the information are UDP. So the Actis is working uh, with UDP broadcast. They don't care about um, and acknowledge if the information is done. It's more or less an, a real-time traffic protocol. Um, yeah, you can say. So each device is uh, broadcasting their information as a uh, UDP broadcast on the network. And uh, the, the design of the protocol is then uh, in that. So 
when we look here for example for the UDP stream um, then you see here a couple of information okay this oh we have to wait it ah, I picked one of the biggest uh, Uh, yeah, this is how it is looking then, like that. Um, but you can see here, uh, NMEA for satellite uh, satellite GPS information. So in this datagram, it's 462 bytes. There are the GPS information uh, that the GPS receiver, for example, get. So the thing is now to write a decoder for that uh, data here that you can make as a uh, Wireshark plugin. Uh, information is more visible like that. Um, on the other hand, I have here also another another network from the Furuno network. It's a little bit more readable. Here you see already um, something. Um, from the AIS system in that case and we just can take a UDP lookup and here you see yeah, a couple of error messages uh, receiving channel 2 mail function uh, TX uh, mail function external EPFS lost and so on so at that time, when I was uh, sniffing on the network, there was an uh, NMEA network gateway that uh, was faulty and uh, a couple of messages are missing. So, also you can find the errors uh, by analyzing those protocols. So that was then the idea to provide a filter for that. Um, yeah, And also at the Furuno network, uh, everything is here in UDP broadcast. We'll find another nice one. Um, no, this is, for example, an AIS message. Um, uh, the malfunction message. Another one. Do I have a nice one? Yeah, here we have an uh, GPS information uh, with the coordinates and so on. Yeah. Okay. Let's switch back to the presentation. Yeah. Once I have it ready, uh, I put it on my GitHub in the Maritime channel. Um, uh, in I have a couple of other sections there. You find some uh, X-ray pictures from devices, uh, IoT devices that I analyze, uh, and so on. Feel free to look at that and so on. Yeah, coming to the end, uh, my contact details, I have to say thank you for watching my talk and have a nice DEF CON 28, stay safe um, and when go out always wear your mask. Goodbye and thank you.